Hello YouTube, this is Mr. Angus Wangus making another video. This is sort of a follow-up to um, a previous video I made. Uh, this is almost a year ago now I made this video. But the video is called Ed Lead Skelnin Coral Castle Flywheel Secrets Revealed. <laughs> but it was about a year ago I made this video and um, it actually was replacing a video that I took down that I had made uh, a year prior to that so two years ago approximately I've been t uh, talking about this um, homopolar effect uh, for Ed's wheel now um, well it's also a, this video is also an update um, to say uh, I've been doing U-Core testing uh, with Ed's U-Core, the PMH, um, lately with uh, using transformer cores and different things like that. And I'll just show you. I have it right here. There's Ed and his sons. But I did different testing. Uh, I need to make a video of that. Uh, very interesting things um, I, I've seen. Uh, these are laminated transformer cores. Um, I have other things I want to do with this too, but um, this is what I've been working on lately. I need to make a video of what I've found is very interesting. Um, the inductive properties of this setup and the advantages um, that Ed got with this setup and why. But I need to make a video of that as well. Um, but my wheel right now is in the middle of a rebuild. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I've been working on uh, testing those U-cores, but this video is basically a follow-up to this video that I had made a year ago that was replacing a video from a year before that. And in it, in this video, uh, I pointed out how Ed's wheel, his flywheel here at Core Castle, has a homopolar aspect to it. Um, now in this previous video, uh, the flywheel video right here that I'm showing you, um, I showed it to be homopolar and I talked about um, different aspects of it and whatnot. But I want to get, I want to talk a little more in detail about that. A little bit more, you know, the different components and how they compare to um, previous uh, homopolar um generators or as Tesla called them unipolar dynamos right um, but I'm actually seeing and I'm gonna name this video um, lead Scallon Coral Castle acyclic generator because Ed's flywheel here although it's <laughs> yeah it's very interesting and I talked about it in this video how it's alt it has alternating poles uh, with a normal homopolar setup um, they're unipolar, right? That's why they call them homopolar, right? That's what the prefix means, or unipolar generators, right? Um, uh, with one pole of the magnet, um, well, with the magnets uh, facing one direction. Um, now, most homopolar generators are uh, unipolar, right? these poles are fixed there's two poles interacting with the molecules in this disk um, but uh, they remain they're they're just in one direction right um, uh, Tesla called these uh, unipolar dynamos <clears throat> for this reason <clears throat> uh, some people call them homopolar uh, generators now, um, Ed's flywheel is, uh, it's not unipolar though, because the magnets on the periphery of his wheel alternate, right? And therefore, the flow in them, uh, the two flows that Ed talks about flowing within the magnets, um, flow, each flow in an opposite direction per magnet, right? They're alternating communicating with one another 
Um, and also what that would do, this homopolar setup like we see right here in this picture, these, gen these create a DC current, <laughs> which is very interesting um, uh, in itself, right? And, and how electricity is being created here um, with these homopolar generators. Uh, now, just to mention, um, if you go to Wikipedia or some other conventional type explanation for the operation of these uh, homopolar generators, uh, they're going to talk about they're going to talk about electron flow still, right, in the disk, right, moving to the periphery as it spins through the magnetic field, having to do with reluctance. Um, but uh, in reality, if we sit and do some critical thinking, simply by thinking about this setup and what's going on. Um, without the use of coils, making electricity without the use of coils, or without the magnetism cutting across uh, coils to make the electricity, right? But if we sit and do some critical thinking ourselves about this setup, um, we can see that this setup actually um, disproves the electron flow theory that we have with electricity. And in replicating something like this, um, that would be demonstratable, uh, which is very cool. And that will be coming up um, from Mr. Angus Wangus channel here sometime soon. I don't want to give away too much of what I'm doing here or what I've been doing here <laughs> because this is super interesting. But, in talking about the homopolar or unipolar aspect of Ed's flywheel in that previous video, um, I think I mentioned, but um, I wanted to reiterate that, okay, now this is a unipolar dynamo, and it's going to make a DC current, right? You, you contact the shaft, and you contact the periphery of the disc, and you're going to get a current off there, low voltage high current, right? But it's going to be a DC current. Now with Ed setup being um, uh, alternating poles on his wheel, the magnets, this is going to make an alter alternating wave, right? And again, not using uh, copper coils to get that. Now, um, Again, Ed's flywheel is uh, bipolar and utilizes an alternating uh, polarity. Um, now, uh, Tesla did work on the um, unipolar dynamo, and that's what he called it. Uh, this is off the internet. These are his notes uh, concerning the unipolar dynamo, and he's got upgrades and suggestions to, for making it better um, as a generator. Now, um, he also made these things, and that's hard to find info on, um, again, which is interesting. But, it's out there, and you can find it. So, the homopolar um, aspect we're talking about, right? We spin this wheel within a magnetic field. It's it's static. It's a static magnetic field, right? We rotate this disc within that conductive disc. Can be any conductive metal. Um, spin that in there within that static field, and we get a current. We get electricity if we contact the periphery of the disk and the um, shaft. Now this can be thought of also as a motor, right? Um, we could add current here at this point, a DC current I should say, here and here and what that would do is let electricity flow through here. Now we have the magnet set up, right? And what that does is it blocks, it flows from here down to here and what it does is block that north magnetic 
stream, right? Causing this to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin, right? <laughs> For anyone who's checked those out. Very cool. They go very fast. Now, um, with Ed's setup now, again, he has alternating South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, North Pole. And these have been verified by people who've gone there with compasses and checked that. You can find those videos on the net or other references on the net. <coughs> um, but basically, this is a homopolar arrangement like I talked about in that previous video. We have, but it's alternating, right? We have the centers of the magnets all protruding to the middle, right? Again, important to um, contact that middle null point of a magnet. These are all magnets and their U's and the U peaks into this middle um, cavity here in his wheel. So the center null points are protruding into the center of the wheel which makes them accessible. He can contact them in a homopolar way, right? So my speculation in that previous video, and it has been for a couple of years, is that he had this wheel filled with water. Now what that would do is, and he had a chain with a hook, you know, a metal hook, piece of metal hanging down that he could have easily dipped down, making contact with the water, frictionless contact, <coughs> and, which is important. Again, like I mentioned in the other video, De Palma and the other experimenters that have uh, replicated these things uh, used mercury contacts and frictionless contacts. It's important. So Ed could have filled this with water. He has all the null points protruding into the center, which would contact the water. He could contact the water and essentially contact the middle of the magnets and uh, in a homopolar way, right? Now, um, also to go along with that, okay, it's going to be a frictionless contact, which is important in a homopolar setup for um, reducing losses, friction losses. Um, this water in the middle of the wheel is in itself the disc, right? Um, in comparison to what we we're looking at here, right? Uh, this disc right here that spins. If there's water in the middle here, um, that's going to spin as well. And so the water becomes the frictionless contact. It also becomes the disc, right? We have the alternating poles, which is makes the term cyclic, acyclic generator um, more applicable to this setup than homopolar generator because it's clearly not homopolar. The direction of the magnetisms are alternating, right? So I think uh, a more proper term for Ed's setup would be an acyclic generator which has to do with um, the static nature of the magnets as compared to the, um, <laughs> well, there is no coil, right? <laughs> the magnets are static as compared to the disc, right? The magnets in themselves, as they touch uh, in this arrangement, can also be, be thought of as part of the disc as well. It's a continuous ring of metal, right? Which happens to have magnetic poles on the tips. But the, the water in the middle could also be thought of as a disc, analogous. So this, this as he used it in a homo or, or tap, got it spinning, right? However he did that. Um, would tap it by touching the water, right? And touching the shaft, which would be underneath, below, right? So the, touching the shaft and touching the periphery or null point of the disc is going to give them a homopolar effect. But again, homopolar I don't think is quite as accurate as acyclical generator. Right? So he's getting that effect. 
and this does produce that would produce an AC wave and I hope to demonstrate that um, coming up uh, the homopolar generator um, again normally creates a DC current right in one direction constant current this would produce an alternating direct current sort of thing as I see it right but I wanted to point that out. This is very important as I see it. Now I've explored the uh, resonance. You know, Ed had those variable capacitors on his tool. Uh, I think perhaps he is using those for something else that he is doing. <laughs> Maybe having to do with his rocks. Um, but um, the, the, my next progression, again, down here, I... I I've been working with these U cores and uh, testing different things, but this is also something I, I think about daily, you know, <laughs> maybe constantly. And um, this will be given a shot. And it needs to be explored again. There are a lot of guys who have done this, you know, Tesla, well, Faraday, you know, the first electrical generator we've ever seen was a homopolar generator, right? And it didn't really disappear. Um, brilliant people like uh, Steinmetz and others, Tesla, have, you know, also worked with this. Bruce De Palma, a fellow named Tawari, um, again. But it needs to be explored again. And seeing as how I'm, I'm trying to unravel Ed's enigma. And that I've recognized this homopolar aspect to his wheel. Um, I want to apply it to my setup and see what happens. And it should be explored again. And I guess just oh, that's taken a lot of my time right there. <laughs> finally done. Just to finally say it needs to be tried again. Um, I have that covered just to be... Um, secretive <laughs> um, I don't want to show it yet but I'm um, close I have to make a, um, uh, a oscilloscope probe for my computer so I can show you that waveform but um, balancing and doing other things here and just wanted to give you a peek anyways there you go Ed and his homopolar uh, setup very important concept um, there are some things on the net and YouTube that you can learn about those things. Um, very, very interesting. Um, but I warn that if you, what you read, you have to filter, <laughs> especially stuff like Wikipedia and stuff like that. Maybe just even stay away from it and go straight to Tesla. Those notes are a great thing to, to read. Anyways, wanted to talk about those things and give a suggestion as to what you're going to see next from me and just tell you what I've been working on there with the cores. But anyways, there you go. I'm going to have another video of <laughs> this coming up soon and um, it'll be very interesting no matter what, you know, no matter what. The concept of the homopolar generator um, is very interesting in itself right so no matter what happens here we're going to have very interesting things to talk about and see so there you are in the future that's what's coming and uh, i'll be working on that i'll talk to you later take care everybody and thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later see you